Swamiji. <laughs> I'll tell you a small story. Yes, yes, yes. A chap who was, uh, was a great devotee of the Lord all through his life, he died. When he died, he was taken to the heavens. So the angel came, took him in a flight, in a helicopter, to the heavens. When they reached, he said, look here, this heaven has got two parts. One is the left side and another is the right side. There was a very big lawn on both sides. He asked the, the angel asked him, would you like to go to the left or the right? Both are in the heavens. He said, what is the difference? He said, look here on the left. There is a small lone throne where a very resplendent being was sitting in a regal manner. And he was alone. Nobody else was there. On the right side, there were millions of people who were talking to each other. He, he said, the left is where people want to be with God, talk to Him, be with Him, they go to the left. People who want to talk between themselves about God, they go to the right side. <laughs> uh. Now I'll tell you another story. There was a monk. All his life, he was extremely devoted to the Lord. At all times, he'll be singing songs and doing meditation throughout his life. He never performed any miracles, but people had great respect for him. And one devotee of his had given him a sweater to wear, a woolen sweater, which he wore for 32 years, never washed it, never once took it off, he said, it's a precious thing, my devotee has given, so he used to wear it. During the last three years, he got cancer. He was admitted in a cancer hospital where there were a number of other people. These were so 100 years back or more, and there was no treatment for cancer. People were brought and put in the hospital. That's all. They will give some vitamin injection. They, can't, they know nothing at that time about cancer. So he was there. And one day he died. Then they wanted to give, give the body a bath before yes. taking it and putting it in the grave. So the nurse came, took up the sweater and put it in the next cot, which was like this, you know, the next bed. There was a lady who was having the, who was in the terminal stages of cancer. The doctor said, this lady will not live for 24 hours. She is going to die tomorrow. That's why she put her next to him, because he used to die immediately. Yes. The next one, so he was putting in that order. When the sweater came and fell on that lady, she was in a coma for the last 20 days. The moment that sweater came and fell on her, she immediately got up with a smile and she began to dance with joy. Mm -hmm. People said, what has happened? <clears throat> she said, test me, I am going to catch him now. So, the sweater which he was wearing for 32 years didn't help him. But the moment it touched her, <laughs> she was rid of the cancer. <laughs> so, saints do not cure themselves, but they cure others. <laughs> now, there is some more further story to the same. Yes. While that monk was alive, he will never allow anybody to touch any part of his body, coming and shaking his hands or this thing. It was very particular. Nobody will come near me. Nobody will touch me. Then, there was one chap who never believed in God or Saturn. Ah, sit down. It's for you. They never believed in God or Saturn. That fellow, one day when he was alive, he came. He wanted to shake hands. He said, hey, don't touch me. Oh, you are so holy. You can't touch me. I can't touch you. Then he was very angry and went away. When he heard that man is now lying dead, he came quickly to the hospital. There was nobody. His body was lying there yet. He came and took his hands in his, his hand in his hand. He said, Oh, my dear holy man, what can you do now? Now your hand is inside my hand. <laughs> the moment he said this, the other hand of the corpse 
shot and then got hold of his both the hands like a like a steel grip and yes. he was unable to release himself. <laughs> the hand of the dead body, it came up and caught hold of his hand. Yes. Now he was in the fix. He cried, he shouted, he tried his level best. He couldn't regulate himself out. Then they called for the abbot of the local church. He came and he began to sing all praises of the Lord for one hour. Nothing happened, it was not released. Then one fellow said, look here, this monk's favorite god was Mother Mary. So, let us pray to Mother Mary, then perhaps this fellow will need the hand. So they prayed to Mother Mary, then the hand came back to his original, he did like this and went away. <laughs> <laughs> this is a real, uh, real thing. <clears throat> this is what happened, I am told, somewhere in Egypt because there were watermelon desert forests. See, the church divided into two, the Orthodox Church of the Russians and the other ones, they went to Egypt desert and all they did it very well and they wrote four volumes of very big books as to how to do prayers and all it is considered as a commentary on Bible. The name is Philokalia. Yes. There are four volumes of it. <clears throat> so, it was, it was one of those fathers. <laughs> Yes, we also have in the Orthodox. I see. Yes. <clears throat> so. Okay. Yeah. So, if you have some questions, you ask Swamiji, and I, uh, I record. Swamiji, what would you recommend to a beginner in the in this search of uh, self-awareness? See, what I would suggest is, you know, when do you, when do we at all want self-awareness? Can you tell me? What do you want? Because simply because he says no. Because then uh, why? Are you not aware of yourself now? Yes, what is the difference yes, between now and what you want? Come on. Unless if this is unless your question is that how can I answer it? <laughs> no, I am self I, I am aware that I am. Yes, you are. <laughs> then what what else do you want? What do you want to be aware of in addition? I you are aware of no. me. You are aware of the room? Yes. Yeah. See, I'll tell you what happens is, all of us, what do you want? You tell me, anybody in the world, you, he, if you ask some hundred people, want to be happy. what do you want, what do you want, what do you want? Everybody wants to be happy. Happy. But answer will be, somebody will say, I want a car. Somebody will say, I want a big house. Right? Somebody will say, I want a big position in a company. I want to be the director. Why? Again, you put a question. Ultimately, it's all for happiness. But the means adopted by everybody for getting happiness is different. Somebody thinks by getting married, you'll get happy. Gets married every day, take a far. That's what happens. Right? Somebody says, if I get a lot of money, I'll be happy. He gets a lot of money, police ride, income tax ride. Income tax chaps and police and dacoits, all people are after him, he is afraid for his life. So, the means we are adopting to get the happiness is different. So, the question is where does this happiness lie and how to get it? That's all we want. Damn all your self-awareness and all these things. We want happiness. Okay. Acha, how long do you want happiness? Say for half an hour? For, since Forever. Ever. Forever. Forever. Right? And. In what place do you want happiness? In Tirvannamalai or here or in Romania? Oh, everywhere. Over, everywhere. So you want happiness everywhere. You want happiness at all times. And you want happiness from all people. Nobody should cause you unhappiness. Is it not? Or would you like somebody to harm you or somebody to no. give you some trouble? No. So that means from everybody you expect you should get only happiness. No unhappiness through anybody. So this is what we want. Now, which is the super bazaar where you can get it? And people were thinking that you can get it outside. Achha, some people thought it is in money. Some people thought in having spaghetti and eating it, they will get it. Somebody thought in getting dosha, they will get some happiness. But we have seen, you don't get it. It's only temporary. Only temporary and that too limited. Supposing you get happiness in taking some sweets. 
you take 100 items of it, will you be able to take it? No. No. So if it is to give happiness, even if you take 1000 pieces, it should give happiness. Right? So this cannot give happiness. So where from this happiness comes? Find out. From which shop it comes? Even the small things which you get. How do you say? You don't come to the conclusion like that because it is in the book. No. Let us see. You, you feel it. You see, say any item of food, what is the item which you like most? Say, uh, fried eggs or fish and chips? Fried eggs. Huh? Fried, fried eggs. eggs, right. Okay. <laughs> now, you think that fried eggs give happiness. But you know, found that fried eggs doesn't give happiness. You can't, if you get more, you become unhappy. Right? And fried eggs, everybody doesn't like. There are chaps who will say, oh, don't bring me any. Oh, I don't like it. So if it can give pleasure, it should give pleasure to all. Yeah. So that means it is not there. So there are only two things, the enjoyer and the enjoyment. When the other thing doesn't give you enjoyment, so it should come from you. It is in you. So what happens is, for bus and bus, you have been conditioned to think, I like it, I don't like it. Even as a child, even a small child, you take sugar and give it. There are children which are spit it out. They don't like it. Small children, I have seen six months old, they don't. So where from the has come? From somewhere the conditioning has come. We say from previous parts. So all those tastes like and dislike. All the happiness is inside you. But why then you get this unhappiness? Because of your likes and dislikes. What you like when it comes before you, Friday eggs when it comes before you, then in its presence, your happiness comes out. And you think it comes from this. Okay. Actually, in its presence, it comes out. So in the presence of something which is bitter, which you don't like, say there are vegetables available in the south, they are absolutely bitter, they prepare uh, curries out of it in south. We call it pavakai. Mm -hmm. It's called bitter goat. Yes. So that many people don't like. So the moment you saw, you feel unhappy, don't bring it. So the happiness doesn't come, it gets suppressed. Now, you want that happiness should be permanent. Then, don't have any likes and dislikes. That is, you are taking out that one way wall, then it's all happiness only. Anything you accept, anything you get, it is a matter of habit. That is what you call condition. condition. If you condition like that, then slowly, 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 you will get happiness in all circumstances, in all environments, everywhere, even if the heavens are falling on your head, you will be happy. So that is how we do. So the entire thing is inside. So who is there inside you? There are ten bulbs in my room. Bulbs are different, but there is only one electricity. But one has got zero watt, another is thousand watt, another is sixty watt. They got different capacities. So similarly here you have got a fellow who is doing ordinary job of a servant in a house. The other fellow is brilliant, he is an engineer. So he is 1000 watt. The servant is a zero watt. So these are all bulbs. So inside that electricity is one. That electricity, what do you call? What do you call that which speaks from you? You are speaking, you are eating, you are talking, you are feeling happiness. Who is it that is doing? There is some force, some energy. You call it I. I took the means. Yeah. I am going there. Yes. So it is I. So it is this I which is the main important thing which is full of happiness. And that I's happiness is not allowed to come because of various obstacles inside. Why the zero watt is not able to give the full light? Because inside the bulb there is some obstacles there. You call it resistance. Similarly, each body has got some resistance. So that resistance has to go. That is what is called conditioning. Likes and dislikes, they have to go. So what is the method of finding that? You can't leave your likes and dislikes now. It is impossible. It will take a lifetime that you can't get this uh, God or self realization So what you do is, every day you sit. Achha, what is it that says I like, I do not like? It's all mind. It's the mind which says. And what is a mind? Like hand and feet, there is nothing called a mind. You can't take it out. Even if you cut your brain, you can't find this mind. There is nothing called a mind. What is mind? 
it is only a collection of thoughts. The various thoughts which come in quick succession, that is what you call the mind. So stop all your thoughts. Don't think of the past. Past is already past. Why should you think about it? And future, you do not know what is going to come. You may think anything, but tomorrow something else may happen. So don't think of the future. Remain in what is happening. Be happy with it. No likes, no dislikes. Just remain there. So for a few minutes, you just sit. Keep it empty of thoughts. But it's not so easy. The thought will be coming. But you don't cooperate with it. What does it mean? Supposing a thought comes of the past, one day, in the presence of 20 people, Mr. Ajati said, you are a dull-witted lady, you cannot understand whatever I say. Now you remember it after 20 years while sitting in meditation, what Ajati said that day. Immediately your face becomes livid. What a cheek! Well, that fellow who had known me for barely for one year and he talked like this. So now again you get heated. <laughs> is it not? So this is what is called cooperating with that thought. That has already happened. Uh, what should you do now? So as such, you just look at it as a witness, let that thought go. Don't immediately clench your teeth. Ah, oh, this happened. Nice, nice. See, you get uh, old dream or thinking of an you know, old cinema. That is all. So this is the way you deal with the thoughts when they come. Then these thoughts will say, this fellow is not easily affected, so they won't come. After about a year, you will find for at least an hour, you can remind with your thoughts. Right? This is one way. And just like that, when you remind without thoughts, then what happens? You exist still. So there is the sense of existence. So without thinking, you remind the sense of existence. How to remind? It's all easy to talk. What do you mean by remaining in existence? A child is just now born one hour back. Right? Can that child think of anything at that time? Why not? Because any thought has to come in a language. You think in Romanian, I think in English or my mother tongue. Somebody thinks in Hindi. Now the child doesn't know one word of any language. So it cannot think at all. But then what will be its feeling like? Its feeling is, ah, I am alive, I am breathing. That's all. It just exists. It doesn't say that I am a child because it doesn't know the word child. It doesn't know, yes. Because then it becomes a thought. Yes. It just reminds, it doesn't say, oh, I am, I exist. No. no. It just reminds in that feeling. Just like that you remind. When there are no other thoughts, you just remind. In your sheer existence, your amness, I am. Just like that. Don't go more. Don't say I am a woman. Don't say I am 25. Don't say that uh, my house will remain and nothing. Simply I am. Stop there. And don't say I am, I am, I am. It's not uh, chanting. So just remind. Just remind in that. It's a beautiful sensation. Slowly, slowly you will see it gives you a lot of happiness. If this much you do for an hour daily, won't take much time, instant self-awareness, the book. <laughs> That's all. Uh, instant self-awareness. <laughs> Latest, ultima carta of Swamiji, instant self-awareness. No, no. You wanted how a uh, beginner should start. This is only one lesson from LKG to PhD. <laughs> that is all. <laughs> a beginner can do it. A man who is a postgraduate can do it. A graduate can do it. A child can do it. Everybody can do it. Because if I say you go on thinking of it, it is difficult. Your mind will go in that. Now I say don't think. <laughs> so it should be easier. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a case where you remind like, Ajati and Swami Shantananda, there is doing nothing. So please remind your hands. What a beautiful state. <laughs> yes. So that's it. But you, you are right, because uh, I, I tried in every way to be happy, like everybody does. 
I, uh, I thought that if I study more, then I will be um, more uh, developed professionally. So I studied, I finished the university. Then I still wasn't completely happy. And um, I had a boyfriend, but it wasn't enough. Something went Don't wrong. hear, don't hear. Uh, then I, I, you know, I, I started to earn money, not that much, but okay, but still it didn't bring me happiness. I had a nice job and I wasn't happy still. And I, I was always asking myself, what is it wrong? I have this and I have this and I have this. Okay, I haven't accomplished everything, but I will not be able to accomplish everything in terms of work, that I want this and this and this and that, and yet I'm not happy. So basically this was the moment which triggered the question, you know... Shall I tell you the logic behind it? An example, I'll give you a real example. Yes. <clears throat> now, you have got money, you have got house, you have got boyfriend, everything. You are not that happy. On the contrary, you go to sleep. Suppose you have got thousands of problems. You are running a factory. Your factory workers are given only they are going on strike. Yes. Right? And then you hear the nation is in trouble, the Bulgaria is invading you. So you have got problems of various nature, social, um, financial, uh, official, domestic. Domestic, it so happens. Uh, your husband has said, so I don't want you. I am just uh, going to divorce. I, I, so, so you are divorced. Now you have got problems everywhere. With all that, supposing you sleep soundly that night. So during the sleep, you don't possess anything. During the sleep, you are not aware of your house. You are not aware of your problems. You are not aware of anything, not even your body. You are in absolute happiness. Yes. That is why, if for four nights continuously you don't get sleep, you remain quiet. You go to the doctor. Doctor, give me a sleeping pill. So I am not able to. Because it is so nice, so have such a happiness. You don't want to lose it for a single day. That is yes. the reason. Yes. Right? So, you get all happiness when you have nothing. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> so this is the logic behind. Yeah, it's nice. This is the logic behind. Yeah. That is why Ajati is very happy. <laughs> I don't have anything, but I have. I am everything. Yeah. I don't have anything, but I am everything. Ah, that's it. See. Yes. I will uh, take this message, uh, your answers. Thank you for the answers. Right. Would you give it to me? Shall I, I give you another, another message? Yes. Please, as, as many as you like, because I will also take all your messages to <laughs> our friends in Romania. The second method is just a little physical. It will help you a lot whenever you got a lot of tension. Supposing morning to evening you are having problems in the office, suddenly a call comes, look here, the lorry taking all your manufactured goods. It has been stored by the police at the outpost. They say the documents are not naive, okay. So, uh, and you have got all, uh, you know, bananas and all, if they are kept for 10 days, they will all become bad. You will lose heavily. So, you have to take immediate action. Then, uh, your banker calls you, look here, Sajan has created, wants his money back, 25 millions. Tomorrow morning he wants it back. Where will you go for it? So like that from morning on you are happy. High tension. What do you do? You will call the telephone operator. Look here, anybody calls, the boss is not in. So let nobody come to me. I won't be inside my room for, for two hours. Nobody will disturb me. That's all. Normally big management officials, they have a small room, separate room behind with a bed. You go and just lie down, just like this on the carpet. Absolutely. Take deep breaths, full deep breaths from here to here, here to back, like that. How to take a deep breath? You just inhale the breath. When you inhale, you should feel it going inside into your tummy, blowing up. You should be aware of it. It grows bigger. You should be aware of it. Like the other is what happens. We normally breathe up to the lungs and leave it. This is what while going. See, nobody breathes for full. If only you did, this is the most healthy thing in the world. 
Daily you practice for half an hour, even this alone, this will help a lot. So first to take away the tension, breathe freely from down below, from the navel to that. You feel when you inhale that your tummy blows out, right? There is a membrane. So that membrane goes down and it fills up. Then when you leave it, slowly you leave it with the same speed. Then you do the, you draw your stomach inside as if you want to make your stomach and your back one, as if you want to make both as like this sticking together line. So you then what happens is the entire air is completely expelled. Like this. If you practice it becomes so okay, gamble, just exaggerating to show you. But in a normal manner, you just uh, breathe it, then you breathe out. Then this alone will give you a lot of relaxation first. And do it ten times first. And then lie down. Just in a normal manner. With your hands down like this. Like this. Then what you do is make from from the toe to the head, make everything very tight, all the muscles, you make it tight. Eyes, here, all the muscles will become tight. Like that, all entire toes, everything tight. That is after lying down. Then slowly you start relaxing them, part by part. Imagine your toes. My toes are relaxed. And all the four fingers Relax. Then this portion. Relax. Then you imagine, imagine that it will become a fact, it will relax themselves after on the tenth day onwards. It may not immediately even. Then these muscles, cough muscles, we have made it rigid. Leave it. Ah. Then you feel my thigh, thigh muscles. Relax. Then waist. Relax. Then fingers, palm, wrist, relax. Otherwise, what is it? It was like this. Relax. Then this portion, relax. Then your shoulders, forearms, relaxed. And your neck muscle, tight. Now it is relaxed. Mouth, tight. Relaxed. Then the muscles here, both cheeks, forehead, then the head. Just imagine, it's all relaxed, all relaxed, all relaxed. We taking deep breaths, all relaxed. Now, this process will take you about five, six minutes, each part by part, imagine. Right? Then again, you imagine all the inner portions. Say here, inside there is a flesh and all that. They were all originally tightened. Now you think they are all relaxed. Then again you start from this. So all the inner things, see in the inside muscles, you imagine the inside muscles are all relaxed. So all the ligaments, all those, everything is relaxed. Like that, you come up to the top. This you do it three times. Complete relaxation. If you feel like drowsing or sleeping, you do it even for 10 minutes. It relaxes you completely. Then, in that relaxed stage, you keep your tape recorder, let it talk at that time. What will it talk? It will give you certain suggestions. The suggestion will be, you are now walking in a desert, in Arabia desert, daytime. It is very hot. Oh, ah, ah. My lips are parched. Imagine, imagine you are there, the hot sun. So for a few minutes you suffer completely. Ah, ah. Okay. Let it take five minutes. Okay. Completely. Then you imagine you are in the Antarctic. <laughs> and you say, oh, oh, cold, oh my Lord, I can't move my foot and... Oh, ah. My eyes are becoming, I can't open my eyes. Oh Lord, snow blind. Oh, ah. So imagine you are in the coldest for five minutes. Okay. 
then suddenly imagine that beautiful some intimate scent from paris somebody has brought just to smell it Five minutes, you enjoy that scent. <laughs> Suddenly, you find you are going through a slum street in India, <laughs> stinking everywhere. Oh, oh, I'm vomiting. Ah, oh, ah, ah. <laughs> so, in a few minutes, you imagine you are having the worst odor in the world. Just remind them. From one extreme to another extreme, okay. one extreme to another extreme. Okay. Right? right? Your office is forgotten. <laughs> your work is forgotten. All your tensions will go within this. Right? Right. Like this, you can imagine further. Imagine the worst incident which has ever happened in your life. You are traveling in an airplane. You imagine. Don't think that I had none. You imagine. Yes, I was traveling in an aircraft. Suddenly, the pilot announces. Bells on, we are going to have an accident. I doubt whether anybody will survive. Pray to the Lord. <laughs> right? Okay, okay. Imagine how you feel that nervousness. Okay. Lord, is it for this you brought me to India? Oh my Lord, Ajati, what have you done? You brought me here. And now this is what, <laughs> okay. this is what I am having. Okay. So, remind in that panic. For a little time, then suddenly we remember the most uh, loving incident which has ever happened. Yes, first time you are traveling in a bus. Slowly, somebody, some young gentleman is there. You don't even see his face. Slowly, his hand crossed, touches your hand. Oh, what a pleasant feeling! <laughs> uh, <laughs> slowly, you build it up. It might not have happened. Doesn't matter. So. If there was no present incident in your life, make it up okay. and leave that at okay. that time completely. <laughs> that is there. And now <clears throat> you are completely relaxed. You can get up. The entire process will take you about half an hour. So this is one of the methods. Now, finally, after going through this and all that, before coming to these incidents or even after coming to this incident, again you have this process of just making all muscles rigid and then relaxing quickly. Now, shut your eyes and simply in your mind hear that somewhere somebody is chanting Om. 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 Just imagine you are hearing it. Just listen to it. She you want you to go to sleep or be listening for 15 minutes. You get up, you are rejuvenated, and you are 10 years less now. Hmm. That's all. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> like it? <laughs> so, this is not a purely spiritual method, but this but is a way to relax here. Yeah, without this, you can't go to the spirituality. Where from can you get the peace? So, this could be a well preparatory exercise even before we can do that. Swamiji, can you tell us and also for the people in Romania, the difference between Om and Aum. Aum? <laughs> because they make uh, confusion, I explain them a little bit, but if uh, you can you see, the point is make this. the difference. <clears throat> well, there is, it's a controversial point, because there are some, some people here who hold that Om should not be pronounced as Om, because in one of the Upanishads it talks of its components, because the word Om is made up of A plus U plus Um. So A plus U plus Um becomes, there is A U M, A U M. So there is what you call it as A U M. The pronunciation is A U M, Om. Um. A plus U becomes O. So Om. And there are other people who say, no, it has to be pronounced as Om because 
it is not a component letter where once it is pronounced it is a whole letter it is one letter only syllable we consider syllable. om as one letter because when bhagavan ramana was asked tell us something about om he wrote a small couplet ekam aksharam it is only one letter so it is unchit made of is made of three mm-hmm. so it is one letter only one letter only om is one letter if we pronounce as such i will tell you the difference mm-hmm. later on as what is the effect mm-hmm. then he says bhasate swayam the om by itself it's coming inside the om and your real i both are the same finally mm-hmm. what happens is it is the signature of god and a signature is more valuable than you shall i tell you how yes she has a bank account she yeah. goes to the bank manager come on i want to draw 1000 rupees you give me 1000 rupees she said get out you bring a check so your signature will get you 2000 rupees while you can't get 2000 <laughs> rupees from the bank true <laughs> <laughs> so lord signature is greater than the lord <laughs> so om i would say is greater than the lord <laughs> so it will get you to the lord at the signature of the lord see when you want to enter the palace it is you you show me a letter with the signature of the king allow this man inside you are immediately put inside so this yeah. is that signature mm uh-huh. okay. which opens the gate <laughs> now uh-huh. om by itself when you pronounce it is the final m which takes you ultimately because m stop if you say k it stops there will you say k does it go no it is only k but um it goes on mm, it is infinite and your sound will be going on for another uh, 20 millions of years up somewhere so this is called the unmeasurable which takes you to the ultimate which makes you bridge the chasm of from one to another it is called the quantum leap where you don't go flying you just immediately make a jump from one plane to another what is the difference in planes now you are seeing this world i am sitting here you go to sleep you find swami shantanjay is dead and uh, his body is being carried now is it in this plane you are seeing in this plane i am alive but you are seeing in a different plane perhaps it's a plane which is 20 years hence <laughs> so we don't know so it is it is only a jump from one to another now you are in this room in vaishta guha you go to sleep now suddenly you find you are the wife of a chieftain in you know, africa west africa you are sitting there so big and your husband is bigger still <laughs> <laughs> you see so how can africa come here so you have just jumped into a different yes. plane so that is what happens so this is called the quantum leap now when you tell that om as it is it's a single vehicle which directly takes you if you break it into a om this the manduka upanishad says each one by itself alone can give you some effects but none of them can get to god they have given so if you do a alone being the first you will be the first among all the people among all the people in the world you will get all fame and name like that for each they are given but they are all material benefits mm-hmm. so if you break it you break anything the benefits you get are ephemeral temporary transient which will not last you take it whole it becomes okay see now we have broken this is ajati this is deep when we are born when god is can give you two ears two eyes nose he can also give a name plate here ajati <laughs> shantanda is it it is not very difficult for you but why did he didn't do why didn't he do it purposely because he doesn't want a name you are all the totality mm-hmm. but no we will not remain i am shantananda you are ajati <laughs> and not only that when a child is born a small child it remains only in totality it doesn't know the difference of anything you go and see the mother goes and sees the child it is just born on our back will it say this is a stranger this is my mummy no 
and it doesn't even know that I am different from you. It seems that we are all one. So it lives in that oneness. Then what happens? When the child is six months old, you start teaching the child. What is this eye? What is this ear? What is this? This is hand. Tell and and. <laughs> Thus, you divide the child into hundred parts. Yes, yes. And it begins to divide it further. I am Christian, you are Muslim, yes. you are Hindu, you are yes. this, you are that. I am Democrat, you are Republican. <laughs> and I am Anglican, I am Protestant, I am Catholic. God knows you divide it, divide, divide it to pieces and the same thing we want to do with the signature of the Lord. <laughs> See, a whole signature if you give, the bank will give. Suppose in the signature you uh, cut it into parts and paste it in three different papers, will they honor the check? They no. Won't. <laughs> so God will not honor the two. Very nice. So, so the Om is different. That's all. The Om should be pronounced as a whole. Is This cutting and all that is allowed in the sense, simply you can take uh, like that. It is called Amrita Varshini. Suppose in your entire life you concentrate on uh, like that. You can live long. You can become first in the entire country somewhere or other. You may become the best painter, you may become the best musician, you may become the best philosopher. So somewhere you know you may gain prominence and all that. But again, why? And we are again being entangled in the world. What is it matter? Mm -hmm. It's not going to give you happiness. So that's the reason why. I won't suggest it. It is better. That's my own opinion. Yes. <laughs> but to pronounce, uh, to chant this sound, Aum, is this yes, correct? Yes, people who is do this? like this, they start like this. Uh, There are people who uh, specialize, they say this should be done like that. You do it, you divide it, one day you will become whole. Till that time, there will be a hole. That's all. <laughs> you will go down. That's all. See, so, everything, you know, people want to divide, people want to have fractions. That is the nature of the big person. The nature of the Lord is to integrate. The nature of man is to disintegrate. That's mm -hmm. all. So, we work at both ends, opposite ends. <laughs> Still, lovingly, the Lord brings you back pain. <laughs> that is his speciality. <laughs> there is a... After all this entire... All this show, this entire world and all these things, everything is going in a very, very systematic way. Now, take a mango tree. It always gives mangoes. Does it forget and one day give you a coconut? No. Now you take the case of a human being. A human being, a lady, she always gives birth to a human child. Does one day she forgets and she gives, does she give birth to a wolf or a lamb? No. So you may call it in your present language, oh, genes and all these things. Who kept those genes? Who prepared those genes? Who thought of such ingenious things like genes? So there has to be a force which is in charge of all. Wherever there is a system, there has to be a system maker. So simply if you take like that, you don't bother who that system maker is. There is one. So you just link your mind with him sometimes. Whenever there is any trouble, or even before you go into meditation, anything, first you pray to him. Prayer is the best method of approach to the Lord. And this gives a very good base. Then when you start the meditation, the Lord Himself will support you. That is, that cosmic energy will come and it will take you further. So your efforts will be less and the outside of, outside uh, help will be too much. So we can get it so easy. So your yeah, prayer is a must. And the better thing is, before you start your Chapa or meditation and all these things. First you start reading some nice, beautiful, elevating sentences. You need not go to various books of philosophy or other things. Simple prayers you have got even the Old Testament. Those Psalms, yes. Psalms of David and all that. So there are some beautiful Psalms. Just you read them. 
you keep them all together written uh, please mm. eh? again oh not again oh, oh, oh that's right uh, this morning who came with us we i and so um where were we reading the uh, songs songs huh? thank you so first this. in the morning you pick up seven things and keep them ready it need not be a continuity whatever you like like that some beautiful sentences you keep them all together read it for about half an hour let it be simple prayers prayers to the mary prayers you see there need not be anybody called a jesus there need not be anybody called a mary all these prayers go to the ultimate source so at that time think that jesus is the ultimate source take it that mother mary is the ultimate so force only the ultimate source or force whatever it is like so with that full idea with the entire heart you pray for half an hour and then you start all these things <clears throat> there was a there is a big church in one city in the olden days they had about about 50 monks morning for 2 hours they used to read the bible loudly each one will be reading a portion loudly for full 2 hours and then they will have their breakfast and then they will go and sing the prayers the choir the prayers and all that for about 2 hours and then they will go and do some jobs somebody will bring vegetables and all that look after the kitchen somebody will go to the library and keep them there and all this so each one has got some allotted job they used to a new abbot took over that church he said what nonsense morning nice spirit you are all devoting for these useless things no 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 you leave it in the morning you will all go outside and do some agriculture work plant some seeds and all that and what are all the plants um, nobody will do all this nonsense early morning you see full 2 hours reading some bible and all that this is not the time and there is no need for 2 hours then they left it off within 6 months about 50% of the people they fell ill and they were unable to recover they were becoming worse and worse their strength failed then within another 6 months yeah please stop this done <laughs> I want no monks would get like this and ask what is the really want so you said something about uh, this profession the meditator what <laughs> can you repeat that before you used to say this let me complete the story yes so in 6 months all the rest of the people in the church all the brahmacharis who are there and all the other monks they all fell ill now the abbot was worried what is the reason doctors from diagnosis he got other doctors from other countries nobody could diagnose they all said said something that one fellow said your chaps are sleeping less let each one sleep for seven hours they become okay they began to sleep for seven hours and their body became worse they used to get headaches so it didn't help then somebody said they are not eating very well they should eat more so he made compulsory that everybody should eat one and a half times more then they began to have colic trouble they are gas trouble and more problems then one day this man didn't know the abbot was traveling the train and there was another holy man by his side then he told this holy man all these problems she look here i don't know what has happened my people are all falling ill i don't know why she said take me to your church let me see then he interviewed them all and then he asked within the past say one year say it is the last one year you are all falling ill before that one year and now was there any change in your routines then they said yes in the morning we used to read the bible for about one hour for about two hours and then we used to sing and then we started our work but now this abbot stopped all those things then these things are happened then he told the abbot start again the same thing let them do that two hours chanting and all that they started everybody became okay so this has got a great thing before you do your meditation in the morning read some portions of inspiring sentences from some scriptures or from some other things or simple mm. prayers to the lord which you find anywhere or don't borrow loans of prayers from other saints what you do your own 
full on. I don't know what's the prayer. I have no idea. But I have been told by one Shantananda, he says you pray. Praying is easy, but praying is not so easy. <laughs> so, I don't know. But whatever I do, you accept it as prayers, Lord. Huh? See, look here, Lord, I am not accustomed to all these things. See, I am new to it. Well, I can carry on a factory, I can carry on an office. This is a new job which I have come. <laughs> Unless you help me, how can I do it? Talk from the heart to him for half an hour, that is prayers. It is perfectly okay. <laughs> you need not get by heart. Um, uh, Saint Assisi's prayers, Lord, make me the instrument. Not necessary. <laughs> Don't borrow, no loans from outside. So you own, you make it up. And after that, you do your meditations, whatever it is like. So that is the best way to start with in this thing. Prayer is most important. What is the difference between prayer and meditation? Prayer, you, you talk to God and when you meditate, you, talk to God. <laughs> <laughs> you see how you far are, it you went? You stolen my words. <laughs> Yes, prayer is where <clears throat> you talk and God listens. <laughs> and meditation is <laughs> where God <laughs> talks <laughs> and you <laughs> listen. <laughs> so Amiji, but tell us about your uh, qualification as meditator. What as you a said. Meditator. That if you would know that this is so good, <laughs> you would start it well, earlier. I don't know what to say because I don't whether I have done much of meditation at all. What happened was, supposing there is a factory managing director and in the factory under him there is a worker. His son has passed graduation in me. If he comes and asks, will that managing director post him as a general manager? He will say, no, I don't want you. But if the laborer pleads, he will make him either as a supervisor or a higher laborer. That's all he will do. But supposing his own son, who has barely passed with minimum marks in BA, has come, he will not sort him as a laborer as a supervisor. He will post him as GM production. Right? So I was the factory manager that, that uh, director's son. So he didn't allow me to start from the beginning all this meditation and all that. So I am a child of God's grace. <laughs> That's what happened. I have done much less of sadhana even though everybody thinks, Oh, Swamiji has done this, Swamiji has done that. Nothing I have done practically in my lifetime. And beautifully, he has been giving me promotion after promotions. After all, one day, after my father, I have to take over the factory. It's very nice. Uh -huh. yes. So, that is what has happened to me in my actual case. Yes, meditation I used to do sometimes. What happens now, when I was recently in Thirvannamalai, God uh, resorted to a ruse to make me meditate. What he did, he made some four or five American ladies and there is one American Swamiji there called Sudarshivananda, very nice person. He's there for a long time, he was Mahandami's disciple. Mm -hmm. So these people came, Swamiji, we want to come and meditate. I said, okay. And what time? Sudarshivananda said, Swamiji, I am told that you get up by three o'clock, I will come at four o'clock. <laughs> Now at 4 o'clock he comes and he sits. Now I can't sleep before him. I have a repute at Swamiji, I am supposed to meditate. <laughs> so I had to meditate. <laughs> and 4 to 6 we meditate at 6 o'clock or 6.30 we go there to the Samadhi hall. There I sit every time for half an hour. Otherwise will say what Swamiji is nowadays not doing it. So before them to keep my reputation I do again my, my meditation there for half an hour. <laughs> then half an hour for breakfast, we again come. All these people follow. And two more people, one Shamala and Natarajan are there, they also come. So now some more, the more the merrier. So all these people will be sometimes looking at me, so I can't afford to sleep now. <laughs> so very alert, I sit in meditation. And that is why God punished me 
made me do it. <laughs> with, a, with a rod in his hand, he was teaching me, well, you will do meditation. This is what he has been doing throughout all the time. Do you believe that I will be mad enough to remind such a valuable man who is speaking from the time you came till now? Do you believe that I would have of myself or taken to silence for full one year? <laughs> no. But then he made me do it. <laughs> he gave me the orders. The inner voice came and said, you are going on silence from 15th of July for nearly a year and you won't move from Trivandamalai. This place, the entire period will be here. Yes, if there is any urgency, you may move. But only for one night we can be outside. So three times I had to go twice for some medical consultation to Madras, only one night. So I had to go for Pondicherry one day, that also I'll tell you how it happened. I didn't go by myself, everything I made to do, it's a hundred percent fact. This year, November, last November, 18th or 17th was the Mother's Day at Pondicherry. The mother, she was a French lady, who ran the show for till she was 93, 95 years, 98 years old. She was, she was a very good girl. A lady in her photo is there, I think, behind the home. Behind the home yes. is there. I know. You her. take it out and you see. She is the mother, yeah. Mother Meera. She is the one. She died some years back. She, 18th of November, people come from all countries. Mm -hmm. You see, the room where Mother lived, it is kept to open only that one day in the year. You can't go other days. It will be locked. So that day there will be a big queue, all people from all countries. And you can't get a place to live there unless you know somebody. And I was never much connected with Aravindu Ashram. So I had never gone for these functions and all that. I just got like that once or twice. 17th, the previous day, suddenly a voice comes. The voice is clearly a foreign lady's accent. Perhaps there is the mother, that's how I took it. Hey, at Pondicherry tomorrow everybody is comfy, coming from all foreign places. Won't you come to see my room? I was floored. I had never thought of her. I had never prayed to her. I had nothing to do with the mother. So, I was shocked. Now it is too late. Where to approach? Whom to approach? I am in silence. I can't even go and tell the baswala if she that give me a ticket to he will ask what? <laughs> and that fellow will be illiterate if I write in English he can't understand, there will be problems. I said, what will I do? And I'll be now it is already twelve o'clock. If I go there night I will reach at ten o'clock. Where will I go in such a accommodation? I knew nobody there. So I went to another friend of mine at there, who is one of Japan Chandra Mauli. He rang up somebody, one in charge of a PCO at Pondicherry, and told him, Swamiji will be coming. You, you try to arrange for some accommodation. He said, just now for another friend of mine, I went, all the hotels are booked. There is no place, even in a hotel, even if you pay thousand rupees tonight, you can't get. Hmm. Anyway, you try again. And Swamiji will be coming, you come to the bus stand and take him. Between night 7 to 8, he might be coming. That's all. Now, I want somebody to come with me so that he can talk. <laughs> then I went to one Mr. Vakitraman who is settled there, next to Sheshadri Ashram, in that road, the third house. <coughs> He's there with his wife. I knew him well. I yes. went to him, wrote, Look here, I am going to Pondicherry tomorrow, is Mother's Day, are you coming? He said, okay, I am coming. Within 15 minutes, he took a bag and was ready. <laughs> We left Rishan after about four hours because we took a detour, we couldn't get the direct bus and all that. We reached there by about 6.30 or 7, that man was there. He said, Swamiji, you are lucky. What? I went to the international guest house. Hari Om, Hari Om, Ayya Maharaj. Ayya, Ayya, do come. They are my friends from Romania. <coughs> and uh, he is called Ajati, she is called Ajata. Both are from Romania. Ayu. She has come now Ayu. only. He had been for eight years in Trivandamali and had read the entire Vedanta. He has written a book called The, uh, the Garland of Wisdom of Vedanta. A big book. He had published. 
and he is my only European disciple. <laughs> so I tell everybody. Can I sit here? Yes. I think this is better. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, now we are. Uh, he has asked some questions which I am answering in his Please taking video. Uh, where were we? We took Vengatan. In the bus. He said to the room. Suddenly, he said, Swamiji, all rooms are booked because tomorrow is Mother's Day. So people have come from all countries and Indians themselves, all Bengalis have come because they are the main chelas, all from Bengal they have come. So there is no place, they said. Again today I went because he said, you go and try again. Just when I went, somebody was vacating a room and he gave the key. He said, all right, here you take the key. So I have already given the money and booked it. <laughs> so you can remind that, okay? So we went straight there to the international guest house. Took the room, myself and Makatlam that night. And they said tomorrow morning from 7 o'clock they will begin to issue tokens. Then you have to stand in the queue for nearly three hours before you can get the darshan of the mother's room. There. Because that is open only for one day in a year. So I said, because we all get our daughter by 3.30, I said let us take a round. So at 4 o'clock we went for a round. And in one of the entrances to the Aravindu Ashram, we found a small queue of some 100 people. We asked, what is the matter? Oh, we are having an early morning uh, darshan of uh, room. The other one will start at 7 o'clock, this starts at 4 o'clock. <laughs> I went and stood there. Within 20 minutes, I was inside the mother's room. <laughs> All people, very quickly, they were taken inside. And everybody was asked to stand only for 2 minutes, they said, you get out. He told me, Swamiji, if you want, you can sit and do meditation for 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Unknown place. 15 minutes I meditated. So this is how God has been helping me. So what I meant to say is, you wanted to know about your my meditation. So I had neither agitation nor meditation. <laughs> but the Lord gave me promotion after promotion of sheer grace. That is what happened. Yes, I was made through meditation like that, as I told you, when all these people are there coming. And then, this American didn't, didn't leave me. Especially our Sadhana Saraswati and all these people, yes. they were coming in the afternoon also. So, two hours in the morning, two hours from 4 to 9.30, except for that half an hour for breakfast. Yes. Four and a half hours, evening two hours. So, six and a half hours meditation was forced on me. <laughs> right? <laughs> this uh, is how I was made to meditate. Everywhere the same thing had happened. We have a scripture called Bhagavatam. My Gurudev, when I met for the first time, he said, You will talk on this. Every year you will come from a birthday seven days. For five words each day in the morning, you will chant the entire book. In the evening, you will lecture on what we have read. I have never read the book. <laughs> so the first time when I came, I couldn't understand all the things. But the stories in general I could make up. There were a lot of questions and answers on the various types of knowledge and philosophy. Vedanta, which passed through my head. I mean, <laughs> above my head. But in those days, I used to talk only on things I know and finish it. Four to seven days. God didn't like it. So this bugger is avoiding reading the entire book. <laughs> so what he did, I was in an office. My next next neighbor in the other room, I was in charge of the finance. So all the bills had to come to me. But the Ministry of Finance had to finally pass the bills of all the ministries. So one representative was attached. One day he told me, Sir, is there anybody who can teach me Bhagavatam? I want to learn it. Each shloka by shloka, each couplet by couplet. I said, I don't know anybody. After two months when he came to my room, he saw the invitation from Vasishta Guha, where my name was written that he will be doing lectures on Bhagavatam. Yes. He said, you cheated me. <laughs> <laughs> he said, from tomorrow, we used to get one hour and a half for interval during 2 to 3.30. He said, you will start Bhagavatam from first to Shloka, couplet by couplet, you will explain. My Lord, I have not read it myself now. <laughs> so, I took a big book of commentary. Night up to 12 o'clock I will read in order to teach him the next day for one hour. 
This is how God made me do the entire scripture. So everywhere I was forced to do, I was not, I was reluctant to do myself. This is how things happen. But the Guru Mantra alone, when a mantra is given for chanting, if that alone you continue to do, it becomes a meditation and ultimately it can take you to the Samadhi stage. Yes. So, so that's what I have been doing to you quite well, though not often. And instead of sitting and doing it and all that, at a later period onwards, some years, I was doing it all the time, while walking, while talking, while sitting without anything. So it was continuously going on. That was my only plus point. The other, the greatest plus point was the grace. That's That's Swamiji, can you uh, mention some uh, texts which my friends in Romania can read? The most important text on Vedanta. What do you recommend? See, you see to me, what happens <clears throat> is, since the, yes, for a normal person, I would say, the best book will be Vivek Sudamani, or what is called the Christ Jewel by Shankaracharya. Yes. That is a normal, uh, traditional book that is there. But nobody wants traditional things, nobody wants to take much effort. No, no, you only tradition, because I told them the same. <laughs> no uh, new Advaita. <laughs> <laughs> so, I would say this is perhaps the best book. But if somebody wants to have a general idea of what all our scriptures have taught, what is the real culture of India from the very beginning, how spirituality has pervaded painting, medicine, Every aspect of life was uh, connected with spirituality. All these things, a book has been published. It is called, I think, The Indian Heritage. The book is there available in the children's section as well as in the adult section in Ramanashram Library. There are three volumes published by Dayananda Ashram. Mm -hmm. Swami Dayananda Saraswati yes, yes. Ashram. They are published, it was published in America. They are very good. They give you the every aspect including about Vedas, about philosophy, I mean some minimum ideas. It gives on all aspects. Three big volumes are there. So pure Vedanta, if you want to start with, normally people start with the book called Atma Gotha. But somehow I feel that Viveka Chudamani is self-sufficient and all the things are contained in it. And with a very good commentary, it will be very good. The best commentary perhaps in English. It is a publication by Bhavans, Bharati Vidya Bhavans Publications. Yes. It had a commentary by the ex Shankara Acharya of Shingeri called Chandrasekharendra Bharati, Chandrasekhar Bharati. And that commentary has been translated into English by one Shankar Narayana. So that book is available, Viveka Chudamani, which commentary by Shankara Acharya. Yes. So that is available there, 250 rupees or so, they were costing some years back. So that is the best book for understanding the Vedanta. As for the modern people who have tried to spoon feed the present people and all this somehow, I have not read much about that. So I have no idea at all. How many of them are good and which of them are good, etc. Somehow I have no idea. Even what you read, um, that Swami Satsidananda, Saraswati and all that, I have not read them. Even no, though I took your book for some time. I didn't. The English was not so good. Uh, <laughs> Not so I see. fluent, not. But that's why then I read books from uh, Ramakrishna Mission. Right. These are better. Yes. Yeah, sir. And anybody who wants to become a monk, mm -hmm. there is only one book which I will recommend, and that book is called Jivan Mukti Viveka by Vidyaranya, which is available in the Ramakrishna Mission. Mm -hmm. That's a very good book. It's there. What about uh, this? Uh, very good books. Ashtavakra Gita, your favorite? Ashtavakra Gita <laughs> is my favorite, it is the best. Is so I was afraid of talking about it because it is very high. <laughs> it is much easier, but it is also equally difficult. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> See, both are there. It is the best. And 
people who are allergic to the word God, people who are allergic to sadhana, <laughs> this is the best book that is there. Ribu but, Gita? Eh? Ribu Gita? Ribu Gita, Bhagavan has always told about it. But somehow, the English version is not very elevating for me. Mm -hmm. I don't find it that elevating. Because when you read, unless you have the full background of Vedanta, you can't understand a word of it. That is there. So simply by reading the English version, I don't know how far without understanding it if you read. I don't know in what way it can help you in moksha. He has given the Tamil version to some people only. As I said, if a doctor prescribes penicillin to you for fever, it doesn't mean that everyone can take penicillin. <laughs> because each one's constitution differs. The same penicillin can kill me. Yes. So as such, somehow I feel the Rebukita was given to those people, some people. This is perfectly okay. But to read it in English for all the people, I don't know how far it will be helpful. Because I don't want to contradict the greatest soul on earth. There is Ramana. So, with the, only this much comment I give on that. <laughs> and uh, Mandukya Karika? Mandukya Karika also is of a very high standard. See, um, these Upanishads cannot be read by themselves so easily. But anyway, portions of it can be read in their book. All the things won't help because the first Prakarna and all these things, he doesn't explain why. The moment you put him against the wall and ask, tell me why, he will say it is written in the scriptures. So they are all based on scripture, the Agama Prakarna, the Advaita Prakarna. So only the second one called Vaitita Prakarna and the last one called Alata Shanti Prakarna. So the firebrand, the last one. Mm -hmm. These are the real two where some real logic is there. Mm -hmm. Based on the dream and all that. They are worth reading. You cannot understand the first time. You may not understand the second time. And it is quite probable you may not understand the third time also. But if you continue to read, one day it will dawn on you. That's all. Then there is no doubt about it. And uh, from Upanishads, which ones? Yeah, from Upanishads. 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 The best Upanishad I will always tell is, number one I will put Mundaka Upanishad. Mundaka. Mundaka Upanishad. Number two I will put Katha Upanishad. But it is voluminous, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And number three, I will put Keno Prishna. That's all. Chandokya, Bradharnika, they are all too big. Nobody will touch it with a pair of tongs. So better leave it. Even though they are good in parts. Mm -hmm. Parts of them are very, very ennobling. But you have to take the entire basket of it and you will get these three somewhere down below. So, these three are sufficient. Kato Parishad alone is sufficient. And uh, Mandukya, Upanishad? Mandukya Parishad with Gaudaba the Karika is very good. But as I said, it will require several times reading. And it is not everybody's uh, pudding. Mm -hmm. This is a special pudding, <laughs> which only a few will like. <laughs> that is why. Now, Kato Parishad, everybody will like. Kero Parishad, everybody will like. That is why I suggested that. So, uh, um, but what I would suggest is, for many of the people, the method of consolidating and who am I of Bhagavan is equally good, it is very good, it is excellent method. So people who can read it is really good, I would say. And it is a very good one, there is no doubt about it, even though it's, it has never been my method because I came to Ramanashram too late after taking up the other method where I had already advanced. So as such, you know, I couldn't take it up. But I knew very well and people who came to me on doubts on that, I was able to clarify it. But I myself, you know, oh, there is no need for me. Because we have to go by one path. And when once you almost reach the gate, will you go back and come by the other route? <laughs> there is no necessity. <laughs> so that is it. Uh. But uh, <clears throat> both are equally uh, important or uh, good? See, equally means not all. See, the traditional path is more difficult and it's not direct as 
Bhagwan says, it is direct, but as I said, like a, instead of who am I, the method like I am that remain the existence, which I said just like the small child, remind that amnesty. That is much easier. I uh, put it like this. I said, is uh, the Bhagwan's method is the inquiry method. Is a question, no? Yes. And uh, traditional uh, Vedanta, Advaita, is uh, uh, affirmative. Method, affirmative. It is the method of Aham Brahmasmi, the Mahavakyas. It's true. Uh, this See, is what I told finally, them. Finally, shall I tell you, there is no choice. You <laughs> and I think there is a choice. Yes. There is a drama going on. <laughs> In the drama, Mr. Ajati is there searching for a job, he has no job. <laughs> then he gets appointments, letters from five different places, from Benares, from Delhi, from Bombay, and from Basitabu. Now in scene one, he is discussing with you, can we go to Vaishtuga, but it's the worst place, there is no doctor and all such things, and there is no TV even, so what can we do there, and all that. So in scene two, he is discussing about going to Bombay. In scene 3, about Delhi. Then in scene 4, he says, I have decided I will be only at Thirunamali. Hmm. Now, this is not a decision of his own. It is there in the drama script. This is how what you will do. So, this is not really a free will. So, all the choices you think you have, it is all nil. So, the way in which you have to approach, you have to go to God, it is all fixed. And you have to go only by that. That is there. So it is he who takes. So if somebody goes with the Ajati's method, he goes because he is bound with him. It is already in the drama script. So <clears throat> people want to know, this is not clear in Romania. Is it, is it all uh, written already, the program, or people can do see, something? See, I told them my, yes. my conviction, no, no, my understanding. It can be done. You know how? How? Now there is a drama. Yes. You, are, you are doing the drama. So in the drama one day, you come back home and you find a note has been kept by kidnappers. They have said, I have, we have kidnapped your wife. Unless you pay 24 lakhs of rupees, she will not be released. And if you don't answer to this by one month, on first of the next month, we will send you the little finger of your wife. <laughs> 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 right, they do it. They write like that. Now, according to the script, drama script, you are supposed to worry, you are supposed to be, then you are supposed to call the police. Right? And with all your worry, you say, Police, please do something. You are telling. But internally, you know, the girl who has been kidnapped, she has not been kidnapped, she is behind the screen. <laughs> And she is nobody for which you, you are never married to her. <laughs> she is a girl from the other road. <laughs> right? But you have to do about the script. Yes. But where is the free will? With your mind, you will be thinking, even while you are weeping there with the police, you will be thinking with your thing. Oh, now this arti will be going on in Ramnashram. <laughs> now it is a time for Upanishads. They will start Taitari Upanishads. Or you may think of her wife, you may think of her child. No direction can catch you, uh -huh. right? So the mind has got the full free will, while the body, uh, every action, your speech, everything is about the script. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, and God has to be caught not by your hand and feet, only with the mind. Uh -huh. So keep it continuously on Him. Do all the work of God in the drama. Don't bother about it. <laughs> so, as Bhagavan said, the surrender, is to this is what is called surrender. That's to all. accept accept fact. whatever comes because the drama you don't do a choice mm -hmm. and then say no no kidnap it don't kidnap I don't like it <laughs> I don't want the scene then everybody will throw stones because <laughs> you are supposed to be your wife is supposed to be kidnapped <laughs> the, the screen <laughs> so you allow them to happen but internally are you are you really angry with them because she's no. the screen we should be angry because <laughs> the right? So you'll be laughing internally. The same thing you do. Let heavens fall. You be happy, happily happy. Uh, you be happy. Everybody is okay behind the screen. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it.
Okay, so G. We, if you have want to say something for closing, for something the final, for final, final. We have one minute, two minutes. <laughs> and I will maybe conclude with a small incident. There is a very big anniversary which was run by one great poet, come philosopher called Rabindranath Tagore. He is world famous. He got the Nobel Prize for his book called Gitanjali. It's a philosophical poem containing a lot of spiritual ideas, but they look very nice. So he ran a university where painting, music, all these things are there. No question of simply reading for history, economics and all that. It's a very free university. This is in Bengal. So one gentleman who finished his painting course, he was to go back. He took his autograph notebook and gave it to the second in command. After Rabindu Tagore was the head, next to him was a great spiritual giant. His name was Gurudeal Malik. He took it to him, sir, you write something, this autograph, I am leaving tomorrow. Yes. He wrote there, forget yourself. Yes. That means, forget your body, always think of him. Yes. That is the idea of it. He wrote there, forget yourself. The next day he took it to Rabindranath Tagore. He saw the previous speech. He wrote there, remember yourself. <laughs> <laughs> there it is capital self. That self means the highest force, the supreme God, whomsoever you may call it, the supreme force. He is called the self, the big self. Yes. So you remember him, you forget this false self. That yes. is what you mean. So this is my concluding words. Yes. That is, remember the self and forget yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Swamiji. It's uh, 80 minutes recording. <laughs> Finished. Thank you. Are you on?